Good afternoon. My name is Janice Hammonds, and I am the principal, actually the proud principal, of the Anita Uphouse Early Childhood Center. <laughs> On behalf of our staff and students, I would like to welcome you to our dedication celebration. We are excited about this special day with all of you here to help us celebrate and begin. And with me today, I have five of my wonderful kindergarten students who will help to lead us in the pledge. If you'll please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic in which it stands, one nation under God Thank you very much, boys and girls. You did an excellent job. Please bow as I pray. Dear wise and loving Father, thank you on behalf of all who are gathered here today. Thank you for your many, many abundant blessings. Thank you for the blessing of life itself and for the measure of health that we all enjoy. In this season of Thanksgiving, we are so thankful for the wisdom and vision of the Austin Board of Trustees in providing this great and wonderful facility, which will serve Austin families for many years to come. May the administration, teachers, staff, and especially students enjoy year after year of excellence in learning. And most of all today, and personally, we are thankful for the many years of service and outstanding leadership of Anita Uphouse. I offer this prayer of thanks in your son's name, amen. Thank you, Ms. Westbrook, Dr. Westbrook, for your commitment to the early childhood education. We appreciate you. Now I have a special welcome and presentation from one of our kindergarten students, Malachi. Hello, my name is Malachi Jimenez. I'm a kindergarten student here at App House. I will be a future graduate of 2025. On behalf of my pre-kindergarten and kindergarten colleagues, I welcome you to the Up House Early Childhood Center where the excellence of learning begins. Our kindergarten and pre-kindergarten classes have a small token of appreciation to Miss Anita Up House. This afternoon, we have the distinct honor and privilege of dedicating this facility to an individual who has been a passionate advocate for early childhood education for over 40 years, Ms. Anita Uphouse. Ms. Uphouse has been an inspiration to many in the field of early childhood education. In fact, Anita is the reason why I'm here today. About 23 years ago, I had the opportunity to befriend a teacher who, was a, uh, who taught kindergarten in AISD. I, uh, at that particular time, was working at a nearby school district and didn't have the resources that AISD was able to provide for their teachers. I chose and uh, decided that one day I was going to go to one of their Saturday trainings and workshop and see if what my friend was telling me and the wonderful things that the teachers were able to uh, enhance their learning was really taking place. So I got dressed that Saturday morning and decided to go to where they were having a training and thought, you know, 
If there are only 40 or 50 people there, no one would recognize me, right? So I walked in and I sat down and I just thought if I act like everybody else in the room, no one would ever notice that I was there. Needless to say, during the break, I remember Anita coming up to me and she said, hi, how are you doing? My name is Anita Uphouse. And I said, hi, how are you doing? My name is Janice Darrington at the time. And she said, well, I'm glad that you were able to come out. And I said, oh, isn't this wonderful? And we just ex exchanged, you know, real, really nice comments like that. And she walked off. At the very end of that session, after I've enjo I enjoyed at least six hours of training and being involved with AISD teachers whom I didn't know at that particular time, <laughs> um, I asked the young lady next to me, I said, you know, I noticed that lady is going up to uh, tell um, the presenters, thank you, who is she? And she said, oh, that's the director of the early childhood edu education department. I said, <gasps> So needless to say, my first thought was to get up and go to the ladies' room and never come back. <laughs> However, I stayed to the very end because I was uh, on the other side of the room, and there she was waiting at the door as, as the uh, teachers were exiting the door and giving them their certificate at that particular time. And as I walked by, <laughs> I said, oh, I don't think my name is in there. I'm sorry. And she said, oh. You know, but thank you for coming, and um, if you're ever interested in Austin Independent School District, give me a call. And she never once said at that particular time, I know you really don't belong here. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it, it took me three months during that time to realize and, and to remember the, the warm and smiling face that Anita exhibited when I was there in that particular training. And it really stuck with me, and I thought, if you could have a director like that and work for someone like that, what a privilege it would be. Needless to say, about three months later, I applied in Austin Independent School District and became one of the pre-K teachers with Austin Independent School District. And I want to thank you, Anita, for hiring me 23 years ago. <laughs> And I want to thank her for coming and everything she has done since she's been here. Not only did she provide me with my, my uh, first job as a pre-K teacher here in Austin Independent School District, but she also was a mentor to me as well. Uh, Anita took myself as well as several others that are in this room and she allowed us to become trainer or trainers for Austin Independent School District, for Scholastic and for DLM. So there were many weekends that uh, at least once a month that we would pack all of our little blue tote boxes and travel to Dallas and anywhere that uh, they needed teachers to facilitate training. And because of your confidence in myself as, as well as the others, we, we thank you for that. But it also gave us the opportunity to continue working in early childhood education and also seeing the value of it. You may have heard my story, and for some of you, especially my uh, Aikens High School students who are here, I am a product of Project Head Start way back in Houston, Texas, when my parents were given the opportunity to put us in a preschool there, and therefore also were given the opportunity to uh, learn what it was going to take to be supportive of children. My parents didn't have the education, they didn't have the money, and they didn't have the background, but one of the things that the program in helping young children did for them was to give them the understanding of what it was going to take to be successful. I must say years later, and I'm not going to say how many years later, but I, I did graduate college, and I came from a neighborhood in which if you were to calculate, one out of 20 was probably going to be successful. So I came from that neighborhood because of a program such as this. So the early childhood department and all of the benefits that you often hear about, it is not something that I read about and just say because I'm passionate about that in my job. It's my life. When I see the parents walk through that door, I see my parents 50-something years ago. And when I see the children walk in with very little in the very beginning and then leave out of here happy, that was my life 50 years ago. So this early childhood center that you see is not just a, uh, something that happened in just another school. 
For me, it's my life and my opportunity to give back to that life. And I hope you would join me in making sure that there's some child in this school who will walk away and 50 years later be able to stand before a group such as yourself and say that Up House Early Childhood truly made a difference. There are four things that we want every child to leave our school as well as our families from our school. We want them to know that this is a good place to be and they belong here. This is a place that they can trust, a place that there will be, there a place where they can go by themselves and a place where you want to be. We truly believe that we have the opportunity Sometimes it's an hour a day, sometimes it's six hours a day, to provide not only the best that we can, but to make sure that the children here at Up House is given the unique opportunity to set that solid uh, foundation that they're going to need. Often I have to contend with my high school uh, colleagues when they said, oh, you just with pre-K and kindergarten. And then I looked look at them and say, do you know if I don't give them that solid foundation that they're going to need in the very beginning, the house that you plan to build when you're in middle school and high school, it's going to come down. And I guarantee you, when you see children acting up at your school, those are the children who didn't have the opportunity to go to pre-kindergarten or attend Anita Up House Early Childhood Center. <laughs> Nine weeks ago, we opened our doors to approximately 450 students. We will be able to accommodate more in, in the next school year. Uh, we have kindergarten, preschool programs, and children with disabilities, as well as parenting programs for our parents to give them the support they need in order to support their children as they move towards the field of excellence. We have a lot of help, though, in getting everything up and ready. Many of you, if you were here during that time, during the summer, we had this cafeteria and gym full, and then we empty it out, and it, there would become trucks again, and we would empty it again, and trucks once more. And my most fun memory this summer was um, June, I think it's July the 27th, um, when I was up on a truck and taking uh, boxes out and uh, working all day with my staff and, de and the deliveries. And that particular night, my daughter called and said she was in labor. So I text back to Austin and said, wow, I had delivery trucks during the day and I had a delivery during the night. <laughs> That's what I call multitasking here at LA. <laughs> but I also want to thank many of you for stepping in and helping when we needed the help, for being there when we opened our school, for being there when at night many of the nights that we had to stay pretty late and getting boxes uh, unpacked. Uh, the AmeriCorps program, thank you. ACE, thank you for coming even in the times when you were off during the summer, but thank you again. The AISD construction management for being there with us and helping to guide us along the way, for really listening to some of our ideas. When we talked about putting lines on the floor, you didn't really question us, but as you know, those red and green line means a lot to us. You know the direction in which you're going. And, and thank you so much, because now I don't have to get on the floor every day and put tape on the floor and keep it up. So thanks for that, and thanks for listening. For uh, B, BGK Architects, are you there in the house? And oh. Okay, thank you for being patient with me, guys, as I came through and, and would look, and I wanted to see every little detail, and every time you put something new in, I just wanted to see it, even if it was in the raw state, but thank you for being patient with me and for my pink, wonderful pink construction hat. I appreciate that. <laughs> To Houston Elementary, who allowed us to use their building during the summer, my secretary and I had the unique opportunity of being there. Mary, can you wave your hand? Every day we were there just ordering things. But I thank you, Mary, for being there when no one else was. So thank you again. Also for IBM, Sandy, are you here? 
Stoughton, for your contribution to our school and your computers for our, our young explorers. You'll, you may see one in our parenting room and the others will be in our early childhood lab, which we will use as we uh, continue to develop our parenting program and we'll have programs for three-year-olds in that room as well. To the transportation department, the cafeteria department, thank you. For our contractors, Bartley Cox, are you here? Okay, they're not here, but thank you too for, for being there for us. I also, but last but not least, want to thank the students who are here. If there are any Uphouse students here, they're all in the back, okay. <laughs> As, as many of you know, in, August, in April, we will have another such de de uh, dedication, and it will be for the week of the young child. And many of our families will be invited to that and participate that, and it will be a, a week-long uh, festivities for our, our families. Uh, and most of all, last but not least, to all of the Up House staff, if any of you are here, please stand. office staff, cafeteria staff. I would like to thank them because they are truly troopers. I don't know how many of you had the opportunity to open a new school, but it, all, it often means new guidelines, new rules, new principal, you know, new, just, just new everything. And although that could be very, very exciting, it can also be very challenging because every day there's something new, even if we didn't anticipate something to be new. But I want to thank them because they too are, are troopers in helping us to get this done and, and also being there for the children day after day. And although many things are still new and we're still unpacking boxes and, and putting things in place, you often see the smiles and the hellos in the, in, um, in the hallway as children enter into the classroom. We all know that this facility is about children, but it does take the adults who have heart, the soul, and the mind to make it happen and to make it successful. So thanks to each one of you. And last but not least, I would like to... Uh, express my appreciation to our school board for understanding that foundation for early childhood, for giving us the opportunity and believing in us that we will do what we are called and sent here to do. This is not just my calling, but it is the calling of this school to make sure that the children will graduate on time and ready to learn. And thank you for entrusting this school, the staff, the parents and the community to, to us, but we're here to help make it happen by doing our parts. Thanks again to that. If you think about any great school, the most, almost the most important thing you can have is having a great leader and a great principal to kind of help that school happen. I even heard things about her I did not know before she told the story. We are unbelievably blessed to have her as the leader. So can you please give a big round of applause? And Anita, thank you for finding her. <laughs> so it was great. Well, <laughs> we're happy to have her. Um, I, and I just want to reiterate, you know, when you think about a school and how, how challenging it is to sometimes do all that needs to get done, you have to have a great leader. But she acknowledged the, the staff of Anita Uphouse. Thank you all for being part of this opening, being part of the team that here to educate the kids, and to the volunteers with the ACE. You might have seen them in the red shirt, which has been a great partner with Austin and the AmeriCorps volunteers that come in and really help our kids with early literacy. So if you could, one more time, can you please give the staff and the volunteers and those that are making the experience here <laughs> wonderful? Thank you. Okay, I want to make a couple of introductions here, and Janice referred to the board members, but I'm up, joined up here by Vincent Torres, who's the vice president of the board, and Lori Moya, who's the secretary of our board. And I've been on the board eight years, and I've been fortunate to serve with them for six years. They came elected after, two years after I got here. And I will say, you know, we come to many events. There's lots of things. This is one of the great celebrations. This is what you love coming to. There's a lot of things that are, some are more fun than others that we go to. And I will say that over the, my entire board tenure, these two are always there. They always show up, whatever events, whatever place. Thank you. I can't thank you enough. You know, and it, 
as with this, you know, we, we are elected geographically from around the city. Neither one of them were elected from this district, but they're always here and they're always all the districts. So I just can't thank them enough for being a part of a great team at the board. Um, there's a couple of, at least two former trustees that are here, and I saw them, so uh, I would like to actually ask them to stand up. Pat Whiteside and Jonna Edwards, wherever you two are, they're there together. <laughs> They were on the board when I first got on the board, and actually, Jonna was my mentor. Thank you, Jonna. Although she's probably going, I think I did better than what you turned out. I don't know what happened to you. <laughs> Some of the influences stopped that I gave you. Uh, but both of those two people, you talk about the early childhood passion, those two embody that. They, they really have let us know, and I think that's something that the three of us try to continue to carry on, which is how important early childhood education really is. And we're fortunate to have a facility like this. This is the second early childhood center that we have. The first one is called Lucy Reed, and it's in Vince's in Northwest Austin. And the, the incredible work that goes on there, we're anticipating that happening here. And I hope you got a chance to tour this facility. Is it just not incredible? It's beautiful, it's colorful, it's just, it just feels vibrant. And just speaking of colors, I don't know if it's just pure coincidence, but if you look at the back of your program, what colors on the back? And then look at Anita help us colors. I mean, it's like these, sometimes people just have a sense of fashion and it just goes all together. I mean, what a gift. I mean, she understands kids, adults, it's just everything. So we're very fortunate. But one of the things that really over the past few years that this board and this, and this district has really tried to emphasize is the whole child. You know, we want to make sure that everyone's academically prepared, but it's not just about academics. It's not, it's important. Sadly, that's what all of the tests seem to be about, but it's how do you prepare kids to be successful in the world? And a lot of that needs to start early. I mean, a lot of research talk about how do you in invest those things early? And there's a couple of really great things that are happening here. One of social emotional learning. And I happened to run into a, a volunteer who's not here today, but I, I ran into her in a parking lot at, um, at a shopping center. And I, she, she saw me dressed like this. She goes, where are you going? She, came, she said, I'm going to, I need to have a house. She goes, I work there. I do social emotional learning. That is the best place ever. They got a great principal. It's a great school. Completely unsolicited. And I went, that's the kind of stuff you like to hear when you're walking around our town. That's not always the stuff we hear, but that's generally what you like to hear. <laughs> And it was great, and, that's, and I think there's more of that than others, but that was, it was incredible. So that, the intent to really get kids to understand how to have the skills to be successful, and you learn those early, which carry forth the, your entire life. And it's harder to learn that when the other influences, so starting early, and that's one of the credible things here. Also, dual language. There's been a big emphasis in our district about trying to get kids to, to have two language skills. And when you think about, we're Americans, right? I speak English not very well, and that's about it. So... But the idea is when we've, I'm completely decided, is my, I've got a family living with us. I mentioned this to somebody earlier. My brother-in-law's living with us with his wife who's from Germany. And they, they're looking for stuff. She speaks four languages. And people coming from other parts of the world are all at least bilingual, if not multilingual. And I feel like I'm just embarrassed because I don't speak English well. She speaks as well as I do. Plus, she's got these other three languages that she speaks and has traveled globally. And we need to prepare our kids for an entirely different world. And that needs to start early. The learning skills, particularly for dual language, is when you learn early, it, make, it, it just opens up a whole part of your mind that you don't otherwise do. And then you can build on that and learn additional languages. So this school is really starting with those, I would say, there's many things we're doing, but it's the foundations about how to be a kid, how to, how to have the skills to be a, you know, a kid and an adult. How do you get the dual language capability? And that's what this school is all about. I'm always impressed by what our team is able to put together. And this is one of those schools that, that the, when I say the team, everybody came together. Um, from the, the team that staff in this, to our facilities people, to the people in the community that supported it. And I want to say, schools like this don't happen by themselves. I mean, the public has to vote for bond increases to allow us to have the money to build schools like this. And so, on behalf of all of y'all who are the public, who we asked to pay in 2008 to approve a bond program that allowed the money and the resources to be available to build this school. Thank you for doing that. Thank you for investing in our kids. Thank you for investing in our staff and making the school district what we need to be for all of the children in our district. There are a number of volunteers that serve on that that were very fortunate. There were some advisory committee members who help us prepare the bond program. There are oversight members that make sure it gets built. So this is really a community effort to create this facility. And then what we do, really as members of the community, is effectively turn it over to the AISD team to say, now it's yours, please run it, please make sure that we do all we can for all the kids. So it is a partnership, it's a combination, and we're very blessed that the community continues to support ISD. I hope you continue to do that. We have many more kids out there that need our help 
and look for opportunities to way to engage. Paying taxes and helping us fund bond programs is important, but there's also volunteer opportunities, example by the ACE, but there's lots of ways to get invested in our kids and our children and support the schools that we're here. Um, so this is a ch early childhood center, and these, these programs work. Thank you for supporting it. Now, at this point, I was going to turn over to Sam Guzman, who was actually the trustee for District 2 that really led the way. Sam Guzman was a, a passionate advocate for we needed to give some relief to Linder, who's been overcrowded for years. But it was not just give relief, build a school, but let's create a facility that would enable us to provide more support to kids so that, as Janice referred to, they're not coming out of elementary school, or even getting to elementary school, not being ready for elementary school, and they're coming out of elementary ready for middle and all that. Sam couldn't be here today. He, he got called away this morning. He's got a um, family relative who's, uh, who's very, very close to, who has cancer and is in, in a grave situation in San Antonio. And so he's at um, hospital bedside with his friend's wife, and he wasn't able to be here. So he's, he's really sad and um, expresses his regrets for not being here, but he just he had to make a trade-off today, and he made the one that I think, I think was the right one to be with his family uh, and support them in their time of need. But I'd like to, on behalf of Sam, just sort of welcome you to what's called District 2. This is um, a part of town that has a lot of challenges and that we are trying to provide resources and support to it. It's a very diverse community. And Sam, I think, has done an incredible job being an advocate for this part of town and being an advocate for this facility. And I know on behalf of him, he would like to welcome you here to what's an incredible um, program and an incredible institution. And he, again, he's sorry that he's not able to be here today. So on behalf of Sam Guzman and the entire board, welcome. Thank you for being here. Uh, we're very fortunate to have you all here. If you didn't get a chance to tour it before you got here, please do it afterwards. Uh, and please support our kids. So thank you very much. There were a couple people I forgot to mention. Um, for our library person who helped us was Miss Elizabeth Polk and her team. Are you here today? If you'll just do it. So that great design was part of our teamwork, and Elizabeth had a lot to do with that. She was part of our team in helping us design our library. And then there's one special staff member that, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Well, if you notice, over to the side, and, and our panda will come up. Oh, it's okay, panda. Remember, we stop, we take a deep breath, and we relax here. Here we go. And we only cry when we're at home. <laughs> All right. But I would like to also welcome you, our panda, our mascot here at Up House Early Childhood. If you wave right there. And panda will be coming up in a, in a little bit because she has a presentation later. Thank you. <laughs> now I would like for you to please join me and give a round of applause because our next person will be Miss Anita Uphouse herself. Thank you. I just wanted to say to Janice, mission accomplished. Thank you. To the members of the Board of Trustees, both the former members and the current members, I want to thank you for the support that you've given to this marvelous facility. I think all of us can feel it in our hearts that this is going to be a place for young children who will be the benefit, will have the benefits of a solid foundation. As you can tell, this is a crown jewel, and it'll truly be a place where excellence is going to be evident. My hope is that every student that has the good fortune of coming here will gain a love of learning this day is among the happiest in my lifetime. And my heart is just full of joy. I'm especially delighted that I have family members here to enjoy this with me. They're on the first two rows. My husband, John, has been supportive for over, well, for 50 years of my passion to my career. And he has always been understanding when I just knew something had to be done for the school. And I appreciate that. 
Our daughter-in-law, Daylene, I pass, and our grandsons, Cole and Reese, are here from Scottsdale, Arizona. Our daughter, Julie Bell, and her husband, our son-in-law, Frank Bell, and our grandchildren, Millie and Charlie and Maddie and Michael, are here from Olathe, Kansas. My sister, Vera Naff, and my brother-in-law, Dean Naff, are here from Colorado Springs. My niece, Linda Arnold, and her husband, Dale, and my great niece, niece Tricia, are here from Oklahoma City and Dallas. And my nephew, Dr. Ron Witzke, surprised me last night when he flew in from Liberty, Missouri. So you can see why I'm so happy today. They're here on the first two rows. And then I have two friends who have, over my career life, been very special to me. And one is my college roommate, Janelle Piney from Bernie, Texas, and she's back here in the back. The other, <laughs> the other two, uh, two are colleagues of mine from when we started teaching in San Antonio, Texas, Art and Marianne Winden. So when something like this happens, it just really points out all the treasures of life that have come about, and you have a chance to stop and treasure them right now. Some of our future leaders will have attended this school. Some of them are here today. They will be the graduates of 2025 and 2026, and then years after that. The children are our hope for the future. I've always been and will continue to be thankful for my years spent working in AISD. I'm finding that the awe of today has me searching for how to adequately express my gratitude. To be a part of this wonderful place that was a dream of many of the early childhood teachers who are here today. And they worked so hard to make it come true. And then to each one of you who has come today to celebrate this landmark center Please accept my thanks for sharing this glorious occasion with my family and me. My daughter, Julianne, will now make a special presentation. Thank you for coming today. One of the things I inherited from my mom is her emotions. <laughs> and I, my kids in the front row turned around the very first speaker and said, Mom, you're already crying? <laughs> so uh, I am fortunate, to, uh, and I... I thought, do I do this? But I turned 40 last month, and I realized this has been my entire life. And I have watched my mom serve and watched my mom love. I said I wasn't going to do this. <laughs> and these teachers have not only loved me, but I've seen them love my mom. And, uh, okay, I said I wasn't going to do this. <laughs> it is such a joy for all of you to celebrate with us today. And it's such a joy for me to see my mom honored in this way. <laughs> because I saw from home her passion for all the children that she served already and that her teacher served, and then how exciting it is for her to know that even when she's gone, these children are still gonna receive this love that she has in her heart, thanks to all of the wonderful teachers here. And I was thinking with you talking about the bond, how you know a, a home doesn't really become a home until it has the family in it, and this was just a building and I saw it this summer when it was just the building. But now it is the true home for all of these kids and all these families. And um, thank you to the Austin School Board and to the people for building this beautiful place. And to 
everybody who made it happen to honor our family and honor my mom in this special way um, because it is a legacy for us that we will cherish forever. So on behalf of our family and my mom, we would like to present a portrait of her and I believe this was taken when she served many of the teachers that are, are, are with her and honor, are honoring her today. So thank you again. Those of you who were that first 35 teachers years ago, if you'll please stand. Some of you are in the audience. Dan, you, you know, all of the pre-kindergarten, kindergarten teachers under Anita? Yeah, there you go. These are the teachers that we call the dream team. And I just want to personally say to all of you, thank you so much for being a part of my life as well as we planned and put together um, books and curriculum and uh, planned together on the weekends. But thank you for dreaming. And I hope that you can see the dream in your ideas in this school. Thanks again for being here. I want to welcome for the very, very first time ever with a presentation, our first Up House School Choir. Give them a big hand and our choir teacher is Rendon. We have uh, just a short special presentation and I think we're going to start first with Panda and Miss Anita Uphouse. Panda, come on up. Let's give a round of applause for Panda. Now, Miss Uphouse Panda, you know Panda comes to school, and she teaches us right from wrong and how to walk in line and how to listen to our teachers, right, boys and girls? And that's one good thing about Panda. And if you notice, we're wearing black and white and purple for Panda. But Panda made a short video that she would like to share with you. Here comes Pete. Strolling down the street, rocking red shoes. Pete is going to school and he sings this song. I'm rocking in my school shoes. I'm rocking in my school shoes. I'm rocking in my school shoes. Pete is 
sitting at his desk when his teacher says, Come on, Pete, down that hall to a room with books on every wall. Where is Pete going? The library! Pete has never been to the library before. Does Pete worry? Goodness, no! He finds his favorite book and sings his song. I'm reading in my school shoes. I'm reading in my school shoes. I'm reading in my school shoes. Check out Pete. He's ready to eat in a big noisy room with tables and seats. Where is Pete? The lunchroom! It can be loud and busy in the lunchroom. Does Pete worry? Goodness, no! He sits down with his friends and sings his song. I'm eating in my school shoes. I'm eating in my school shoes. Pete and his friends are playing outside on a green grassy field with swings and tall slides. Where is Pete? The playground! Kids are running in every direction. Does Pete worry? Goodness, no! He slides and swings and sings his song. I'm playing in my school shoes. I'm playing in my school shoes. I'm playing in my school shoes. All day long, Pete sings his song. I'm singing in my school shoes. I'm painting in my school shoes. I'm adding. Done, Pete rides the bus home. Pete's mom asks him, What did you do at school today? And Pete says, I was rocking in my school shoes. I was rocking in my school shoes. I was rocking in my school shoes. I was rocking. And I will do it again tomorrow because it's all good. Let's give our panda a big hand. On behalf of Anita Uphouse, one of the gifts that we're going to give our school is two books called, it's called Pete the Cat and the Four gravy, uh, Groovy Buttons and Pete, I Love My White Shoes. And we're going to give this in her honor to our school library. Will our librarian please come up, Melissa Payne. This is Melissa Payne and she's our librarian. So on behalf of the Up House Early Childhood Elementary, we donate these books in the, our library in your honor. Thank you. Anita, don't sit down. The other thing that we would uh, like to give Miss Up House is her very own scrapbook of all the pictures that were taken as the school was being developed so that she will be able to share in years to come the many wonderful places that exist here at our school because of her. So on behalf of our staff, and if all my staff was Stan, and our ace, AmeriCorps, as well. So on behalf of the staff, we present you with this special photo album of the Anita Uphouse Early Childhood Center. Thank, Thank you. you.
and on behalf of our families and the students as well, and our st faculty and staff, we present you with your own plate. And it says, life greatest pleasures are the memories of time shared with friends. And it represents Anita Uphouse 2012 for your display. Thank you so much. Next, we will have, as the director of the AISD construction management team, Mr. Kirk Shaw, who has seen many facilities throughout the 26 years tenure with the district. The Uphouse Early Childhood Center dedication will mark his 25th year of facility dedica uh, dedication ceremonies with the Austin Independent School District. And again, I would like to personally thank Mr. Shaw and his team for not only listening to some of our desires and special need as an early childhood center, but being willing to step forward and go out on the limb to make sure that what our young students and families needed to make the school a success not only happened, but made it come to life. And thank you again, and I welcome you to the stage, Mr. Kirk Shaw. Usually I sit in the back of the room at these occasions, and whenever they uh, uh, recognize the construction and design team, I just stand up and wave, and, and uh, that's usually my level of participation. Um, but uh, Anita called me a couple of weeks ago and said, would I do the favor of uh, introducing the construction team and making a few remarks about the facility, and how can you turn down uh, somebody like uh, Anita Uphouse? Uh, Anita and, and I have worked together for uh, over 25 years. Uh, Anita and I worked on the development of educational specifications for our school district uh, and, uh, and all sorts of early childhood initiatives that had any kind of facilities implications to them. It's been a real privilege and it's very easy to understand why a facility like this bears her name is because of the depth of knowledge and the depth of dedication that she brings to the early childhood program and concept. So it's a, with, with a, a great amount of satisfaction and pleasure that I'm able to address you this evening. Uh, I, I hope that you have uh, been able to uh, tour the facility. And if you haven't, I, 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 if you don't do it before you leave today, um, I think you'll miss a great opportunity to see what a, a, a fine facility this is and how well it's going is and will serve our early childhood population for years to come. Uh, I know that Janice mentioned uh, the red and green lines on the floor, which allows the kids to follow their colors to wherever they're going. Um, you'll, you'll notice that uh, a lot of the design is, uh, is child scale. The colors are bright, the entrance you saw, uh, well, but even before you come into the facility, uh, you can see the subtleness. If you missed it, please look at it on your way out. The subtle alphabet that's built into the brickwork across the front of the building. Uh, the colorful crayons uh, and inviting uh, entryway to the building. There is uh, the, the, the natural light. Uh, as you've walked from the, the front of the building back to the cafeteria, you've got to walk through a commons area with natural light that floods in and then it spills over into the, into the classrooms. These are the sort of features that, that really do invoke uh, a, a wonderful a learning environment for our, our students. Uh, and I hope that you're able to take advantage of that. Um, we were fortunate uh, that uh, uh, Jackie Porter and Janice were able to provide a level of input during the design for this facility. This is the first uh, early childhood facility that we have designed from the, from the floor up. We've got the Lucy Reed Early Childhood Center, but it was adaptation of a facility that, that already existed. So we were able to uh, involve uh, the, the users of the facility early in the process. Uh, and hats off to uh, our, uh, our design team. It was uh, headed by uh, Barnes Gramotz Kasarik Architects, and I think Tommy Kasarik waved when uh, Janice mentioned him. Uh, Bartlett Cock was the construction manager at risk. Uh, there was a, a, 
a, a large number of uh, sub-consultants. I won't go into their names, but uh, they are in the, the lower, uh, on the back page, on, in the lower right-hand corner, you'll see the names of those consultants, uh, civil engineers, uh, mechanical engineers, structural engineers that helped uh, in the design. Uh, and it was a collaborative process. The project is extremely successful. We were able to deliver it on time uh, and, uh, and well within uh, what we had allocated for it. It's a beautiful facility and it's, it's designed for, the, the, uh, uh, for our early childhood kids. So uh, on behalf of the, uh, the, the uh, facilities group, it's headed by our Chief Operations Officer, Lawrence Fryer, Executive Director of Facilities, uh, uh, Paul Turner, uh, the Construction Management Department, we are glad that you're here this evening and be able to enjoy this facility and know well what it's going to be able to do for our, our young kids that are in this part of town. Thank you for your presence today. Okay, as people are assembling for this uh, ribbon cutting, I do want to mention, hopefully you all got a chance to look at the program on the left side, because now we're going to dedicate something that's named to Anita, about Anita Uphouse. And hopefully you got a chance to read about her. Um, and I, I saw several members of what I now is referred to, I guess, as the Uphouse Dream Team back there when they were there. We, in, in deciding what to name this facility, this woman had more friends and supporters come to us and tell us that we had to absolutely name this facility about early childhood education and young people about you. And we couldn't have been more fortunate and more proud to do that, and it's richly deserved. So let us now, is everybody ready? And again, thanks to the Dream Team for helping us get to the right spot with the right name for this incredible place. Is everybody ready? Let's get the, let's get the grandchildren up here. And by the way, thank you family members for being here. We're very fortunate you all came from all over the country to be part of this with us. And I want to say, I, obviously, we know social emotional learning is part of the Uphouse family based on what we saw earlier. Okay, are we ready? Okay, let's do it. This school is now dedicated to the staff and students of the early, I mean, the Anita Uphouse Early Childhood Education Center. Cut that ribbon. Okay, do we, we, we want to make sure we have everybody have enough time to take pictures. We didn't want to do it too quick. So make sure get those photos in while you can. Are we ready? Yay! And so again, we appreciate you doing it, but let's just make clear, this facility is named after an incredible legend in education, Nita Uphouse. Thank you, my dear. Is staffed by an incredible team for incredible kids. Please give a round of applause to this young lady right here. Thank you. I would like to welcome to the stage someone who I've met 23 years ago. We mentored and learned together and spent weekends uh, trying to set up our classrooms and problem solving, how to deal with challenging children, how to be successful, and how to work with the parents that we were blessed to have. I would like to welcome to the stage Ms. Jackie Porter, who is now the director of the Early Childhood of Austin Independent School District, to provide us with closing remark. But I first must say thank you so much for your support in helping us to make this happen and always keeping early childhood education in the forefront, who always made sure that when others didn't believe in early childhood, that we continued the belief and continue what Anita left. She took the reins and she ran with it. But she too was a teacher under Anita Uphouse. So Anita was not only there for herself, but she was there also planting a seed in the future in many of us. So thanks to both of you for the seed and for the flower for in early childhood education. Please welcome Jackie Porter. I am delighted to be here today. It's kind of like old home week. We're all coming back. Thanks so much. 
22 years ago, Anita Uphouse, um, I met Anita at a convention in Dallas, and she recruited me to come and teach in Austin. And um, I had been teaching in Abilene, Texas for a couple of years, and Anita said, come to Austin. And this is how young I was. Sure, okay, <laughs> why not? I don't know anyone in Austin. And so we moved to Austin, thanks babe. <laughs> and um, that has been an incredible experience. Thank you so much. Thank you for what you've done for me. But I also wanna say I was so impressed by the level of support that teachers had in Austin through Anita. I was so impressed with the quality of the program that you set. I was so impressed with everything about the early childhood program and how she had that laser focus on what was best for children. Later, I would have the opportunity to work under Anita in the Department of Early Childhood as a pre-K specialist. And I learned firsthand and I saw firsthand what honesty and integrity and commitment to excellence look like. And I so appreciate that. And every day as I do my job, I strive to uphold that bar that you set. Thank you so much. And we'll work on getting better scissors for the <laughs> <laughs> ones that cut, how's that? <laughs> Last spring, I had the incredible opportunity to um, sit in a classroom with a group of kids as they were working in the block center in their classroom. And I watched them build a tower. And they started with the small blocks and then they put the medium blocks, and then they put the large blocks, and then it fell over. And they did it again and again, and then they decided upon a new tactic and started with the larger blocks on the bottom, then the middle blocks, and then the smallest blocks on the top. And they built a tower, and it stayed. So as they were putting the blocks away at the end of the day, I said, tell me what your thoughts are about your tower. And one of them said, the little blocks aren't very strong. And the other one said, the triangle blocks don't hold much. But the last one said, you know what? You gotta build the bottom strong or it won't stay. And I thought, yeah, you got it. Isn't that what we're doing here? Isn't that what early childhood is? Isn't that what this facility is all about? Building the foundation in our students strong so that they can face whatever comes to them, so that they are ready for college, career, and life. That's what we're here for. That's what we're all about. We're building that strong foundation. These are difficult times in the lives of young children in Texas, as the resources in Texas targeted to education are dwindling. But this facility stands as a testament to our commitment, the commitment of two superintendents, of two school boards, and, and this entire community to early childhood education. The commitment that we have made to build strong foundations for our students so that they will be ready for college, career, and life. We wanna build our strong foundations for students so they can build their own towers of academic success. In 2026, when the pre-kindergarten class from this campus graduates, many of us in this room will have retired. <laughs> but many of those individuals that worked hard to make this day possible are not with us in this room, but they are with us in spirit. And this facility will stand even then as a beacon of hope for the future of early childhood education. As we go forth each time we enter this facility, may we appreciate the commitment to excellence and all the hands that made this possible. Our pastor said the value of life's moments is when we not only recognize the significance, but the potential of each moment. This is a significant event, but it also opens the potential for all the events that are yet to come. I am so proud to be here today. Please join me once again in recognizing Anita Uphouse.
Thank you. Thank you. Let's also give our music teacher a big hand. All I really needed to know, I learned when I was in pre-kindergarten and kindergarten by Robert Frewsham. All I really need to know, I learned in kindergarten and pre-K. All I re really need to know about how to live and what to do and how to be, I learned in kindergarten or pre-kindergarten. Wisdom was not at the top of the graduate school mountain, but there in the top of the sand pile, these were the things that I learned in school. To share everything, to play fair, don't hit others, put things back where you find them, clean up your own mess, don't take things that aren't yours, say you're sorry when you hurt someone, flush the toilet, <laughs> wash your hands before you eat, warm cookies and cold milk are good for you, live a balanced life, learn some, Think some, draw and paint and sing and dance and play and work every day some. Take a nap or rest time every afternoon. When you go out into the world, watch out for traffic, hold hands and stick together. Be aware of wonder. And remember the little seed in the styrofoam cup? The roots go down and the plant goes up, and no one really understands why, but we are all like that. The goldfish and the hamster and the white mice and even the little seed in the styrofoam cup, they all die, and so do we. And remember many of you, the Dick and Jane books, when the first word you learn or remember the words that we know in our uh, word wall now is the biggest word of all, to look. Everything you need to know is in there somewhere, the golden rule. Love and basics, sanitation, ecology, political, and equality are the same of living. So each one of us take what we've learned in kindergarten take what we often learn in pre-kindergarten and make that a part of your life, a part of your world, for it holds true and clear and firm to think about what a better place it would be in the whole world if we had cookies and milk about three o'clock every afternoon, would lay down with our blankets and take a nap, or even if all of the government had a basic policy to put things back the way that they found them and to clean up their own mess. And it's still true today. It doesn't matter how old you are. When you go out into the world, it is always best to hold hands and stick together. I want to thank each and every last one of you, again, for supporting our school, for being there for the young children, for making a difference in their lives, and for giving them the opportunity to build their foundation this year for the rest of their year. Thank you again for being part of this ceremony. You're welcome to join us right after this for the reception, but let's give Ms. Uphouse and our school faculty and our school a big, another hand, a round of applause. If you'll notice here on the stage, Ms. Uphouse has donated to our, our library one of her original desks. The desk came from the first school in, that I taught in. It had been taken out before I started teaching, but the school had a fundraiser, and I've had it since I taught in San Antonio, 1963-64. Thank you. And that will become a part of our library. So thanks again for participating with us and joining us in our dedication. This concludes our ceremony. Thank you.